Thanks, Neil. Welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, I kind of hurt my feelings. I'll have to work harder at that because it was, you know, pretty depressing. And first thing, first thing this morning, Jay Cross comes up here and in one sentence blows my whole, says my whole speech. You know, like there ain't nothing like a Hereford for low maintenance and being keeping your profits up by not having to spend money on big maintenance. And I go, well, there's my speech. <laughs> and then I lose the mustache contest. But anyway, we'll bear through it. We'll be like a Hereford cow. We'll just get through it. Um, so, uh, yeah, this afternoon we're going to uh, discuss the strengths of the Hereford breed in the cow-calf operation. As uh, Neil mentioned, I'm from Douglas Lake Ranch, so I'll be using that environment to uh, kind of portray a lot of the Hereford traits that, that we all know and, and uh, are so valuable to us. So uh, as, we, as we go through this, I'd just like to mention that this, this is about the Hereford cow. This is, I'll try not to get this an essay on, on Douglas Lake. But uh, at Douglas Lake in management, we feel that our prime goal is to grow grass. That is our main commodity. Um, and, and so that's what we feel our job is to grow grass. And then secondly, provide the uh, tool to harvest that grass so the ranch can make profit. And not always is the grass easy to harvest at Douglas Lake. Um, it, uh, the cattle are run very low maintenance. For those of you that weren't on the tour, um, we'll maybe just do a little bit rundown on the ranch. The ranch is in the interior of British Columbia on the eastern slopes of the Nicola Valley just above the Okanagan Valley there to our west. Um, it, we have very, it can experience fairly mild winters by Canadian standards. Um, we do experience minus 35 to minus 40 degree weather, but uh, generally not for quite the length of time that the fellows on the prairies have to experience it. Probably the mean temperature is about minus eight in the winter. Um, the, we are classified as semi-arid, so we don't have a lot of rainfall in the lower elevations. Um, elevation runs from about 2,400 feet to about 6,000 feet, so using these different elevations, we can use the different climates at different times of the year to, to uh, run these cattle pretty much year-round. Most of the mature cow herd has a, about a 45-day feed period. Um, so, I catch my notes here. I don't have these slides with the notes on them like these other guys. So anyway, says so we got to like the, uh, the harvesting of the grass. A lot of the country is, is fairly steep and rugged. Um, there's wood ticks to contend with, um, lack of water to contend with in a lot of places. Um, I've known instances where cows at calving time will be in their calving pastures. Um, be only maybe every second day will they, they leave their, they'll bed their calves down and away they'll go get a drink and come back. Um, and that's, uh, Hereford cows can do that. Um, the, most of the year it's, it's uh, like I say, it's low maintenance. I'm in trouble keeping up with my notes here. Um, the cattle with that, um, the country and the low maintenance means these cattle are on the move pretty much continually. Um, they probably travel in the hundreds of miles every year just, just in pasture rotation. A large group of our mature Hereford cows that winter in the feed grounds in one area the first week of March, head to the calving grounds, calving pastures. It's well over 30 miles, and them cows will cover that in about three days. Um, they'll get there for the, we place the cows on the calving grounds, because you can imagine trying to move that number of cattle with small calves is be pretty hectic, so it's uh, try to get that all done. Cows are out on 
the previous year's grass. We'll use those pastures in March, April, and then be gone often before the growing season really gets going. It's definitely complete so that, that we do run in most of our grassland on uh, the previous year's grass. That um, has been talked about a lot today too, but uh, just maintaining those cows is one thing. The, the sustainability of the, to run cows that low maintenance and have them be able to wean calves. These calves come through the winter in a body condition score of probably two and a half. Um, sent up to graze last year's grass to calve on, start feeding that calf, and uh, then be in a condition to, to breed back and be bred back probably by the, by the third of July. It uh, takes quite an animal to be, be able to do that, but Hereford cows can do that. The um, other thing that we do take advantage of with, with the Hereford cattle, and we do have a crossbreeding program. All our heifers, first time are exposed to, to black Angus bulls, and uh, we retain those black Angus baldy calves off the Herefords for replacements for our crossbred herd. Uh, those crossbred cows are then carried on, and when by the time they're second calf, and from then on, we breed them to Charlet for a terminal cross and take advantage of the ability of the, of the Hereford cow to be able to uh, be the base herd to sustain that without getting high maintenance again, cost in cattle. Once the cattle are bred, then they go up, start, we start out what we call our turnout, which is taking the cattle to the higher country um, where we take them up in groups of probably 200 to 250 with the bulls, and they're spread out in some pretty vast area where they're basically left alone to tend for themselves uh, for, the, for the summer. Uh, by maybe uh, earlier October, mid-October, cattle start coming down to the lower country again. Weaning takes place in November and December. At that time, the calves will are gone and put into a backgrounding lot. Um, females selected to be retained in the herd. Some of the steers will will be marketed. Heavier steers will be marketed. The rest will be backgrounded and run as yearlings the next summer. Sold the next fall as long yearlings. Um, the um, other while in the in the high country, the breeding pastures and in the ability of the, of, the, of the bulls to be able to um, cover that kind of country, have the libido to keep going and, and, and stay with those cows and get the job done is uh, very evident. Um, the, uh, the, the Herbert cow really does have the um, the ability to be the base herd of the commercial operation. Uh, they, they do time and again prove to us the traits that, that do make it profitable. There's been a lot of talk today on, on different traits of the cattle. We just talked about uh, you know, how, how docile and what that can mean to the producers. Um, and, and I think there's one thing that maybe wasn't alluded to that, and, and, and docility, I think, has a very close correlation to intelligence, because I know um, if you were to take some Douglas Lake cattle and do the shoot test on them or the pen test on them, um, threw them in a pen and walked in that pen, not very many of them would pass. You could ride through on a saddle horse and they wouldn't even look at you sideways, but if, if you approached them on foot, it'd be a totally different thing, but put in that environment, they're not long adapting to where they can handle that kind of environment also. So I think intelligence is a, is a big part of, of, of being docile also. Um, there's 
many instances where they, through, through the last few years, through BSE, uh, we've experienced some, some drought conditions. We're looking pretty good. Made a little progress on it last year and looking pretty good this year. But uh, went through some years that, that were pretty, pretty lean on those cows and was able to see productivity not take a big plunge. There was uh, some instances where, where I know that it was, you know, we were fortunate. We do have a big area and a lot of grass, but there was times it would have been uh, embarrassing to have three busloads come through that ranch three or four years ago um, because of the way it looked and the condition those cows had to, had to keep producing in. So, um, I guess this is uh, <laughs> winded up here already. Some years ago, I heard a quote, and and uh, and a lot of you have, have have heard me use it before, and uh, that is that uh, there is nothing that can starve like a Hereford cow, and uh, we've we've seen that time and again, and and have it have it proven to us that uh, a Hereford cow it, they can do that. Thank you. Any questions for, yep, here we have a question here. Mr. Jacobs, you've described a pretty rugged kind of environment for your cattle. And, and I'm wondering, what kind of longevity do you have for, from your cows um, and your bulls? Yeah. Uh, on the cow herd, I would say that probably the average age of the cow herd is under five years old, given uh, you know, the, air, the areas and the conditions they're in, which may sound pretty young, but uh, we're pumping about 1,500 replace, exposing about 1,500 replacements into that herd every year. But it, at the same time, it's not uncommon to, um, to see cows there that are 15, 16, 17 years old. And through our culling process, if, uh, if, if they don't have a calf on them, they don't go to the breeding pastures. And if they're not, we do preg test all animals in the fall, and if they're not pregnant in the fall, they don't stay. So I have seen numerous times um, cattle to reach that age in that environment with those kind of culling standards. And the bulls, the bulls probably, we use, we use the bulls for six years. Um, with our, if, quick do the math, keep a heifer, breed it Angus, calf goes in the cow herd, possibility to be exposed to her father, which is slim in those conditions. Born the next year, exposed to a black bull, granddaughter comes back in the herd the, f the following year, that bull's gone. So that's kind of the reason we use the bulls for six years, and I would say probably 60% of the bulls will, 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 will last that long. Um, and probably the, one, the hardest year, as on the cows, their hardest year is that first year when they've got a calf at side and asking them to conceive again, and on the bulls also. Uh, their hardest year is their first year. Most times if they survive that first year, then, then they're good to go. Would you mind please giving us an insight into your selection criteria for your bulls? All right. Um, we, uh, don't get alarmed. <laughs> we don't base our selection on, on numbers very heavily. Um, the main tool we use, I suppose the main tool we use is in what bulls we buy. It, it's, it's, it's where we buy our bulls from. Um, there's thousands of, of, of great cow herds out there, and, um, but we have gone and, and, and found some herds where we found those cattle work for us, work for us well, and are producing the type of cattle that, that we feel we need, and um, we stay fairly with, within those herds and within those bloodlines. We do use some numbers. Um, we do look at them to some degree, but we do not use any, any, any numbers of any kind to select bulls. We'll maybe look at if there's any extremes there and, and try to figure out that, that reason. But um, 
we found that that um, I don't want to open a can of worms here, but in in our environment, the measurements that are taken and 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 used to get a lot of these numbers to produce EPDs indexes or whatever you want to weren't gathered in our environment and and um, and I think that has a has a, has a big effect on it and, and cattle that may score well in another environment may not as well in ours or cattle that don't score well in one environment will do well in ours so other than you know completeness correctness um, that kind of, all the things that we all use in, on, in every animal we select I would say our largest other criteria is, is pedigree. Any other questions for Stan? Yeah, one more. Uh, Stan, how do you winter your cattle in your cold conditions, and what phosphates do you use during winter? I didn't really get all that question, so I understand. The first part of the question was? How do you winter your cattle? through those cold winters, and what phosphates do you use? What was the last? Okay, how, how we win our cattle. So in November, December, when we're weaned, those cows at that time, they're vaccinated and preg tested, and then they're turned back out on native pasture uh, till probably well into January, depending on the snow conditions and the, and the grass availability. Um, and during that time, they have no access to any lick tubs or any other kind of supplementation other than salt and mineral. Uh, when the weather drives them in or, the, or they eat all the forage available to them, they come in and most of the cows, some of the younger cows are fed uh, with a silage ration. And, but the mature Hereford cows, they're just wintered on straight, just long hay that we produce ourselves. Some alfalfa hay, but a lot of grass hay and uh, fed on the ground and uh, that's the winter in the second part of the question I'm sure I'm still I'm not understanding it mineral supplement. mineral supplement I'm sorry yeah and then when the cows are on feed the only difference is it's the same mineral that we use year-round we have formulated the difference being in the summertime it's fed, fed in a block free choice in the winter time when we have the ability it's mixed in the feed but uh, or if they're just on long hay, then it's, it's fed loose free choice. That's the only difference. That's the only supplementation. We will, if, at times, if uh, economics or when it's dry, we have bought some grain screening pellets to help winter our cattle on, but we'll use mostly those t for the background in the calves or maybe to supplement the bulls a little bit. The mature cow herd is pretty much wintered on while they're on feed on, on the forage grown at the ranch. More questions? No? Okay. Great, Stan. Thank you very much. Thank you.